See you, bud. <laughs> See you, buddy. Good luck. Yeah. Well, I hope you will whack him tomorrow, so. I, I think we will tomorrow. Okay. It'll be game on. All right. See you, buddy. See ya. Well, just dropped Kyler off. We were going to try to film a video today. Uh, we caught one fish. Uh, I take that back. We caught two fish. We caught one keeper, which I do have in the live well. Um, it's cold today. <laughs> it's like 35 degrees outside. But the goal is today to catch a limit. Yesterday, we got on some fish. We actually found those same fish and found some bigger ones too. Uh, but it's going to be difficult for them to bite. As you can see, well, this is pretty warm right here. That's 37 degrees right now. 37. Where, uh, where we're going to go fishing, it's going to be like 33 to 35 degree water temp. And uh, these fish are, they don't want to bite. So we're going to have to coax them in with some really small lures. I'm actually going to show you a rig if it's your first time live scope or you're having trouble finding your, your jig on live scope. I'm going to tie on a setup that's going to be really helpful. Okay, we got to go run all the way back down river. Got about a 12 mile run, so let's get to it. So on our way here the first time this morning, uh, we actually had to punch through about half to three quarter inch of the ice. Uh, we had to idle through it for a good, I don't know, mile, mile and a half, which sucked, but we did find some fish. And uh, I'm gonna tie on that rig right now Hopefully this helps you catch fish, especially in these colder temps that we've been getting uh, in February and probably into March here. So hopefully this tip helps you out. It's so cold, I can't even think. All right, I'm just happy we're on open water. Yesterday I was very excited we got on open water. So for this setup, I'm using the 12 foot ACC Super Grip 1000 size PC Fun carbon reel. And this is 15 pound braid, probably a bit excessive for Lake of the Ozarks crappie. Uh, definitely not if you're in Texas or the Mid-South, uh, but they'll still bite. They bit yesterday. So here's the setup. We're gonna be using a quarter ounce uh, egg sinker, pretty simple. And we're gonna be tying that about uh, a foot to foot and a half above our jig. For our jig, this is a 30 second ounce uh, ACC crappie sticks jig. They started making jigs this year. 32nd ounce ACC crappie sticks jig. And for our bait, we're going to be using, they were hitting on some pink and chartreuse stuff earlier today. Um, not very well, but this is the only color they're hitting on. This is the crappie monster firefly. I believe this one's called the electric chicken. So that's the bait we're going to be using. And we're probably gonna have to trim that down to a, a smaller profile. Seemed like they were hitting on those creature bait profiles today, or that they at least take a look at them. The shad ones today, they didn't even take a look at, which is actually what they were hitting yesterday. But So first we're gonna put our braid through that egg sinker, and I'm gonna put it through about three times to kind of lock it in position. Some people tie a knot. You can if you want. Just a simple overhand knot that'll definitely lock it in position, but you put it through three or four times and pull it tight it should be it should stay there and then I'm going to tie a loop knot for this jig for those you don't know loop knots pretty simple if I can get the line through there oh no sometimes the paint runs in you can take another hook or you can take a scissors and cut it all right, there we go. So you can put your line through, pull out three or four inches, double it back over on itself. So you got your tag end and your main line. You're gonna pinch that together like that. Then you're gonna pinch both lines together with your right hand and you're just gonna flip it over this part of your lines pinched together. Whoa, just once, just once. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create this loop right here. You're just going to take your jig and put it all the way through that loop, all the way over the top of your jig head. You still got your tag end and the main line. You grab that, simply pull. And there you go. There's your loop knot. You can cut that tag end off. Just like that. And there 
is our rig. Very simple. Um, a lot. This actually, I saw it used probably very effectively, or the most effectively, while I was fishing in Mississippi uh, with those guys from the Long Branch Guide Service. Uh, we were fishing Sardis Lake, and uh, this works really well if you don't want to run a double jig setup. Um, but if you're having trouble seeing your jig on live scope, quarter ounce, probably even go to a uh, three sixteen or a five sixteenths uh, egg sinker if you're really struggling to see your jig on live scope. It's going to help you out. And we're going to start with the big profile. Mm, I'm thinking as I'm going here. I don't know if I should start with the big profile or not. Let's profile down a bit. I've decided. Oh. I'm going to use kind of a V-shaped pattern. So just a, just a little bit of movement. They, these fish really don't want a big, a big profile bait. They're not hitting it very well. So let's drop the live scope down. Oh, first. Today we want to catch a limit. Uh, this is the, the button by Mad Fish N. And a uh, pretty cool setup. I did it last year, or I used this last year while I was here. You can keep 15 fish over 9 inches. Um, so what, what the arrows are is you set your limit. So we're going to keep 15. There. There's our limit. So we set it. And now we already got one in the box. So I'm going to wait till it goes back to zero. And push the button. My fingers are really cold. There's one. When it gets to 15, it's going to buzz and let me know. Okay, I got 15 fish in the box. And... We got our limit. This helps you go not go over. Plus, if you wanted to do, um, I guess, a 1v1 challenge, you could hit the button for the amount of fish you catch and use the arrow key for how many your buddy catches. So we're gonna keep that with us. For you guides, this thing, this thing is uh, super effective. Make sure you know how many you got in the box when you're catching a bunch of fish with your clients. I know a lot of guides use this. I'll leave a link in the video description. Let's uh, get you on the live scope setup and start catching some crappie. And, oh, too dark, too dark. And that screen looks a little dirty. Mad fishing, they also make uh, screen spray. Let's clean you up a bit so we can actually see what the heck we're looking at. There he is. Um, oh my goodness, it's a little guy. I'm shooting off the bottom though, super aggressive. That guy is not gonna keep. See you, bud. Well, I think we got the right pattern and size. It's just coaxing these crappie to bite. There's a ton of them down there. Such a light bite too. I don't even think he's a keeper. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's not. Such a light bite. It's just like dead weight when you slowly pick the rod up. It's just dead weight. He is not a keeper. Oh my goodness, he is. You gotta be kidding me. There he is, nine and a quarter. It's keeper number three in the box. That's uh, two, three. There you go. There's one. Be a keeper, dude. These are such soft bites. They, uh, they're not actually thumping it. You don't feel the thump. You just kind of pick up slowly. And if you feel weight, they got a bit. And this is a dink. This is where I knew this was going to be a grind of a day. Cold, cold air temp, cold water temp. 
usually not conducive to a really hot bite. So we're gonna grind it out. Drop it a bite. Oh, there's one. He thumped that one on the drop. Maybe. Oh, this is not what I normally catch at Lake of the Ozarks. These maybes, the ones that are borderline keepers. I always gotta measure them. Normally this isn't the case. Gosh dang, he stuck it good too. There we go. Let's see what you are. Oh, yep. He's barely a keeper. Nine and a quarter. But he's gonna he's gonna keep. Barely. And which one is that? Number four. There you go. Got his attention. Yep, there he is. Yeah, I did. Uh oh, battery died. Threw some of, uh, since I'm in Kyler Backman's backyard basically, where he likes to fish, I threw some of his specialty waxworm scent by JB Fishshoss. That's a dink, that ain't gonna keep. He came out with his own, uh, his own scent. So, thanks Kyler for that fish. I don't know, I'm trying everything I can to get these fish to bite. It's a grind, I knew it was gonna be like this, but it's uh, it's very frustrating after a full week of not being able to fish. Now you gotta deal with fish that just won't bite. That might, that feels like a keeper. Yeah, that's a keeper. Now we're getting into them. I'm gonna put them on the bump board, but I'm pretty sure that's a keeper. Not a big one. We're not even catching close to those pound and a halfers that I know that are in this lake. Yeah, he's a 10. Want more in the box. Number five. Slow and steady. That's what today is. It's such a light bite. But that's another keeper. For sure a keeper. It's probably my best one so far today. Which is sad. <laughs> I know what the, this lake has for potential. But that, it's number six. There's one. It's another keeper, I think. I better put him on the bump board, though. Man, this is slow. Yep, he is uh, nine and three quarters. Number seven, eight more to go. Yep, short sticked him, but I got him. That's a better one. That's a no doubter. Look at that, he, these things are, they're barely hooked. They're not hitting it hard at all. But that. That's number eight. There's a good one. That's a keeper. Yep, that's a better one. Jesus. Slow and steady. I only got like, oh my goodness, it's almost five o'clock. Sun goes down about 5.30 and I got about a 10 mile run. He's 11. And number nine in the box. Yep. I think that's another keeper. He's gonna be close.
Gonna be close. No. He is eight and three quarters. No go. There he is. Feels like a decent one. Yeah. That guy's gonna keep. Pretty sure. Oh yeah, he's 10. 10. 10 incher, and I believe number 10. Five more to get. There's a good one. Man, that guy's belly was on the bottom. Didn't even see him on the live scope until he came off the bottom. I think this might be number 11. Come on, dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. Yep, nine and a half. No giants, but they're keepers. There's another one. That one feels like a good one, too. Yep. That was quick. Back to back. I think he might keep, hopefully. Only got about 10 minutes before I gotta really run here. He's right on the edge. He's short. He's short. Dang. Dang. There he is. Really? These are this kind of fish? Well, that's gonna wrap it up. We'll do the outro at the dock. I gotta move. It's getting a little dark. Well, there we go. We got, let me count. This way I have this thing. So I don't have to dig through. We got 11, same as yesterday. Um, it's been tough, tough bite, but you know what? We're fishing, we're on fish, and I've been waiting for this the entire week. So I couldn't be happier really, even though got snow and ice all over the place. We're on open water, we got the boat out. We're fishing in February for Karapi on Lake of the Ozarks. I'm gonna go back and uh, fillet these up. I'm gonna save these for later. I'm gonna vacuum seal them. I cooked the other ones up last night. Uh, made the mistake of forgetting to soak the potatoes. I've made some french fries. You gotta soak those potatoes for like 30 minutes apparently in cold water. Otherwise they taste uh, a little starchy. But, so if you made it this far through the video, I, first of all, I appreciate you watching. Second of all, you're gonna be rewarded. We have a 20% discount for Karapi Monster. That's these guys right here, these plastics. 20% off, promo code DAVIS, all caps, one word, all caps, D-A-V-I-S. Get you 20% off the entire site at crappiemonster.com. Um, huge thank you to Kyler for uh, giving me that JB's fish sauce. He designed it, so I'll leave a link to that below. My entire setup, the 12 foot ACC, uh, the PC Fun Reels, I'll leave a link to everything below. And then of course, the button. I'll leave a link to this as well. I don't have a promo code for this yet. I'm working on good stuff for you guys. I'm working on it. But uh, you can check this out at madfishing.com. I'll leave a link below and then the screen cleaner. Whew. One more day. I got one more day to get it done to where I can actually not only catch a limit, but actually catch some really nice crappie. I'm hoping tomorrow some of these feeder creeks will open up. 
Uh, what you actually didn't see today is we took this boat and drove it through the entire feeder creek, just bro breaking ice. Definitely something I wouldn't recommend uh, for a fiberglass boat. There's about three quarters of an inch of ice, but uh, Kyler's got a guide tomorrow, so I was helping him out a little bit. It's a used boat. I don't really care if it gets scratched up. I just didn't want any holes punched in it, but so we did that. Hopefully those feeder creeks that we drove through and broke up all the ice, they'll be open. We know there's some big fish in there. Kyler was catching them before the deep freeze uh, in those feeder creeks. So fingers crossed those feeder creeks are open tomorrow so we can catch some one and a half to two pound crappie. We know they're in here. I've caught them before. Um, so that's the hope. But appreciate you watching. If you got any comments or questions on gear that I use today, um, any tactics, I know the uh, the egg sinker above a really small jig. I actually use hair jigs in Mississippi, but we were just using uh, 30 second ounce jigs with plastics today. That's probably your best bet to catch these post cold front crappie. I mean, it's still technically a cold front, but it was negative or below zero uh, last week. So this is technically the warm front or the post cold front. Um, but if you got any questions about that you can post them in the comment section below or you can message me on either facebook or instagram again i appreciate you watching as always i will see you tomorrow hopefully catching a limit and some bigger fish